Now on to our next question. Let's talk more about crime in the city. There's no debate. Crime is on the rise. We are currently on pace to surpass our previous record of 97 homicides in a year set in 1995. In my neighborhood, in North Minneapolis, shootings are a regular occurrence, and I've seen firsthand the impact violence has on our citizens. Mr. A.J. Oed, on your website, you've blamed Mayor Fry for the rise in crime. You have laid out online a long-term strategy to fight crime. But what is your plan to make the city safer immediately? You have one minute. Well, I mean, all the literature and all the evidence practices points that we need to have more recruitment and rank and file officers on patrols. Uh, that is the biggest deterrent to gun violence, robberies, burglaries, rapes, and murders. Um, so for me, the first priority for the next mayor, any mayor, should be getting more officers out on the streets. Uh, and that's exactly what I plan to do. And the reason why I think I'm the best person suited to do that job is because I think I have the credibility of communities of color to really have them be empowered to raise their hands. Uh, also really enlist people to you know, be in service for community. Uh, that has to be led by a mayor that has competent community connections, I would say cultural competencies. Uh, and for me, we cannot have Mayor Fry come back because from all accounts, the rank and file uh, do not have confidence. And that is one of the factors leading to the high levels of attrition in the city of Minneapolis. So to me, I think we need to all get to understand that officers need to be hired and recruited. And we need to create an environment that actually welcomes good officers. Uh, now, the long-term approaches are totally different than that. I think that has to do with trust. That has to do with making sure communities of color actually validate the system that we are going to embark on. And if we don't do those two things with a two-step two approach, I think that whatever we do is just going to be in just, I would say, disappointment. Thank you, Mr. Owen. So, thank you. Thank you. Sheila Nazad, your discussion about getting rid of the police department has given you a national profile. As you know, three children were shot in North Minneapolis this past summer. People are afraid. What do you tell families who have experienced violence firsthand and are afraid of losing an already diminished police force? You have one minute to answer. Absolutely. Everyone in Minneapolis deserves to feel safe, and that's why we need solutions. And when we look at gun violence, who's being impacted by gun violence, we need to look at supporting our youth, especially. Youth have been hardest hit by the pandemic, hardest hit by the rising crime. Schools were closed for a year. Park buildings, many of them still closed. Parents, families stressed out during the pandemic. And youth, when we look also at property crime, a lot of it is being done by young teens and there's nowhere else they're supposed to be. So as mayor, I would invest in emergency deployment of youth jobs and youth programming across the city. For the cost that we spent on helicopters last summer to fly around my neighborhood off Lake Street to try to find people who were stealing cars, imagine how many young people we could have given jobs with that money and how much crime that would have prevented. Thank you. Kate Knuth, you're also called for a different model for policing in the city. Police Chief Madaria Arredondo said last week that the department has lost more than 200 officers since 2019. How do you attract public safety officials who actually want to stay on the job? You have one minute. Yeah, I really appreciate this question because we often talk about the number of police officers as our approach to safety. I want to make sure we in Minneapolis know that building safety takes investing in prevention in violence interruption as well as economic security. But we can talk about the numbers here. We are down so many officers under the mismanagement of Jacob Fry of our police department. He has full authority and we're not we're not down because city council has cut funding. We're down because officers have left. So how do we attract officers who want to serve the city of Minneapolis effectively and in partnership and in collaboration. We need to make sure we're prioritizing paying them well. We need to make sure we're not asking them to do things they're not trained for. And we need to make sure that, yes, they are going to be held accountable as part of building trust between our community and officers in the city of Minneapolis. Thank you very much, Ms. Knuth. Mayor Fry, on your website, you have a long list of reforms that you've achieved as mayor. However, there is also a long list of senseless acts of violence that have happened during your tenure. Many crimes are unsolved. As the ultimate leader of the police department, are you doing enough to ensure that justice will be served for these families? You have one minute, sir. Edge, these aren't just statistics for me. These are late night conversations that I have with our chief. These are countless 
visits to the hospital to talk to parents that are grieving because they just lost a son or a daughter. This hits home because it's real. And these conversations, they aren't covered by the news. You don't put them out on social media. Uh, these are the real life impacts of crime and violence in our city. And you need real life solutions. And so unlike others, I have never supported defunding or abolishing the police. My position has been consistent throughout in that we need a both end approach. We've asked for five additional recruiting classes for this next year. We've requested additional mutual aid assistance, cameras for hotspots, as well as overtime to deal with some of the attrition that we've seen. Uh, and as mayor, you're bound to get hit from every single side. We've got some that will say that I'm not close enough with police officers, other that'll say that I'm far too close with them. Regardless, you need to take an honest and consistent approach throughout. And that is exactly what we've done through, through some of the most trying times our city has ever experienced. Just a quick follow-up question. Most of the crime that is happening that we're talking about is happening in North Minneapolis. Many North Minneapolis residents feel as if they are not being heard. Have any of you ridden with police to do a ride along on the north side and have you talked to people on the north side about their fears about the sound of automatic gunfire constantly throughout the night and sometimes during the day? Do you have that in your context? Have you spoken to these people and have you taken a ride with MPD? Let's start first with uh, Ms. Majette. Jean, excuse yes. me. Thank you. Yes, I have. My campaign has been focusing on hearing directly from people. We spent a lot of resources on door knocking and we door knocked every single voting precinct in wards four and five, talking to thousands of people and hearing their concerns and really listening to the desire for solutions and desire for investment. Right? And again, what I heard from folks, no matter where they stood on policing, was a real need for investment in young people, in youth jobs, in youth programming, and especially in youth housing. Because right now, 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds can't afford to rent anywhere in Minneapolis. Thank you. Mr. Awed, your answer to that question. Yeah, thank you for that question. And I think actually it highlights the nuance because I was, I had the, the fortunate to ride on the ride around in the fifth precinct, but I was a participant in a, in a gun violence, stop the gun violence rally held by some neighborhood leaders. Um, and I would say North side leaders, Crystal Porter was running for Ward five and the Kima was amongst them. Uh, and it was shocking to see how small the footprint is, right? It's mostly black leaders, black youth out there saying we need the gun stop, the gun violence to stop and we need to address it in the right way. I don't see my, my progressive allies that were out there um, the, through the murder of George Floyd, uh, really showing that level of consistency when it comes to black lives. So for me, I do have that in my head and it's going to be guiding me to make sure that community's voices are centered throughout my administration. Thank you, Mr. Awed. Ms. Knuth, your answer. Absolutely. My campaign and I have been connecting with Northside residents on the doors, at meet and greets, at community events. It is essential to listen to and deeply um, feel the impact of gun violence in communities. So it is unacceptable for children to be shot and killed in our community. And it's unacceptable for police to kill people in our community. And I think we don't have to choose between uh, public safety and racial justice. And we absolutely can't turn a path forward that forces us to choose. You know, I have done a ride along with Hennepin County EMS. I'm trying to fully understand the holistic approach we can take to public safety and our EMS and mental health response are absolute essential partners in that work. Thank you, Ms. Knute. Mayor Fry, your answer, please. Yes, I've done a ride along, uh, but perhaps more importantly, when I took office, I made a specific intention to be on the north side more than any other area in the entire city, other than, of course, where I live and work. Uh, and what we found in talking to people is that they want to be able to send their kids out to jump on a trampoline or walk on the sidewalk or play a game of basketball without the risk of getting hit by gun violence. We worked directly with 21 Days of Peace and I took up an intersection myself 
uh, to make sure that community members feel heard. Uh, and frequently we head over to the north side just to hear from constituents on what they're experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis. Every person in every neighborhood deserves to feel safe. And when you have around 90% of the gun violence located in five neighborhoods throughout the city, that is just unacceptable. And we need to be clear-eyed about the solutions. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, everyone.